and no. Got that, so let's do a unit dies. So when a unit, uh, enemy unit dies. Enemy unit dies, new event. I should probably just press Control W, but anyways. Any unit dies, and the owner of the dying unit, aka the triggering unit, is gonna be three. Save. Um, and now we're gonna modify the minerals. So player, modify player property. Modify player, killing player, because we don't know what player it is. Modify killing player minerals, and now we want to add, and this is another thing you'll appreciate that we did the bounty amounts here. Um, so we want to add function, oops, variable, wave bounty amount, and one thing you actually need to do is make this a math and make it minus one of the current wave. Current wave minus one um, just because just because this thing gets added right after they're spawned so you need to actually do minus one here and you'll see that if, if you didn't do that you'll see it later being a problem um, and now let's create the text tag of course create the text tag with text um, string combine string first thing we want is plus or let's do dollars maybe dollars is kind of interesting dollars and then we're going to do a conversion convert integer and they're going to do the same thing we just did a second ago which is the wave bounty amount of the math arithmetic minus and pick current wave there we go for all players using that at position of triggering units good height offset uh, 0 0.2 and the rest is good. Copy paste. Um, and now we want to set the velocity to be uh, 0. maybe 0 0.8 and vertically 90 degrees. It's vertical. And then we want to do another text tag thing. We want to set the time of this text tag uh, to be maybe six seconds. Uh, remember we're on faster game speed so it'll be like four, three or four real game uh, real-time seconds and we want to set the color so players will know who got the kill and get angry at that person for stealing their kill uh, set color of text tag to convert player color to color and we want to pick the killing player alrighty and the last thing we want to do or last couple things we want to do here is variable modify we want to modify uh, player kills. Got to keep track of that. Of the uh, killing player minus one, because player kills is one. Oops, one, one spot below. Player one would be spot zero. Player two would be spot one. So killing player minus one to add one to it. Good. And then we got to set the leaderboard. We got to update the leaderboard. I mean, otherwise it won't reflect this chain, this update that just got happened. So we want to set the leaderboard item text at column two, which is our kills column, and row killing player. Oops, it's under unit for some reason. Okay. To uh, we have to do a conversion here. Convert integer. We're going to convert it variable player kills and then we need to do a killing player minus one and I really hope this makes sense to people and they're not just punching in numbers like I am um, I try to explain it as best I can but it's a lot of I'm, lot, I'm condensing a lot into one tutorial like I spent I spent days setting this up before before I actually do a tutorial in an hour or whatever so uh, it's pretty condensed and then of course we want to um, oops we're going to do one more thing after this, but I'm not going to put it in yet um, because we don't have the trigger that exists yet. So we need to make a wave end trigger. Wave end. And what this, all this is going to do, it's actually going to be initially off. And all it's going to do is have a bunch of actions in it that uh, we're going to have two of our other triggers are going to run this trigger. So um, this saves time. So all we want to do is an if condition if and then the condition we're going to have is 
click the bracket, unit group, number of units in unit group, number of living units in units in region matching condition, any units in the entire map owned by player 3, 3 is our enemy player, excluding that with at most any amount, um, less than or equal to 0, let me set that, so this basically means if there's no units um, in the map owned by player 3, aka all of his units are dead. And what we want to do from here is actually, and I'm not done with that other trigger, but I'm just going to put this in now. We want to go trigger, uh, run trigger, and we want to run wave end. We want to check conditions, and we want to wait till it finishes just in case, just to be safe. So now, after after the unit dies, it's going to do it through this, and it's going to run wave end, and wave end will check if it's the last unit. And the reason I'm not just doing, and the reason I'm not just doing this, and not ha the reason I'm not just doing this, is for two reasons. One, because, um, actually, it's for only one reason. I don't know why I said two reasons. Uh, it's the reason is that we're going to have another trigger that's going to also check whether the wave needs to end. So instead of having to put this code or these actions inside here and then inside the other trigger, we'll save time and space by just making them both go to the go to this one, go to the wave end. Um, and you'll see later what I mean if that didn't make sense. So inside here, we need to do another check. Um, and this check will be just to end the game. Um, so if the last unit dies, and if it happens to be the last wave, well, we got to end the game in victory, right? So um, if the variable, if the current wave happens to be 4, which is the last wave I've implemented in my game here, then we want to game end the game in victory for player 1 and end the game in victory for player 2. However, if it is not wave 4, then oops, then we want to do um, play a sound and the sound we're going to play and this is outside, right? Yes. You want you want these con these actions to be inside inside this if but outside this if because um, if if the number if there's if all the units owned by the enemy player are dead right now, then we want to do a bunch of stuff. And if it happens to be the last wave, we want to just end the game. But if it's not the last wave, well, I could I could put this inside here as well. So, but I'm leaving it outside because it doesn't really matter. Um, the sound we want to play is UI Terran Secret. It just works out good. We don't have too many sounds in the game right now because that campaign isn't released, obviously. So we're missing a lot of sounds that we'll have at release, but. That's all right for now. And what we want to do is UI clear text messages. We want to clear the directive area, which is where we put our wave thing inside here, our wave number. So we want to clear it because we're going to change it. But anyways, we want to timer. We want to restart a timer, our own little wave timer. So it'll restart for 15 seconds again. And then we want to set, we want to make sure the title is correct for our uh, um, for our timer window. So t set the title for wave timer window to be and we need a com combination of strings here. I can't just hard, hard type it in now. And the combination, let's see, wave space and then we want to do conversion, convert integer, and we have to do an arithmetic. And we want to do current wave, plus one, and then space in. Okay, so it'll say wave one in or wave two in, etc. And then we want to show the wave timer because we hit it earlier. Show it. Show variable wave time window. Make sure you watch everything I'm doing because you might miss something and that could be the difference between a working game and a non-working game.